thing. I love it when people take a television show and are so inspired then to go and write a play or a book about it. And, uh, or if somebody goes out and sees a movie and they're just like, you know what, I'm going to write a book about that. Harry Potter, of course, was really well done in that genre. But the one that I think is amazing is how the heck did they go and write those books after those Lord of the Rings films? That is details, details in there. Anyway, what we're talking about now is backtracking, going to the past to be inspired by, uh, to be inspired to continue on in the future. <clears throat> Not just being inspired by the music of today, but going back to the music of the past in other genres and other, you know, where the cats, a lot of the cats have passed on. But here their gifts are alive and they're, they're still on the planet for you to be inspired by. Okay, man. I'm telling you right now. A couple of things I'm inspired by. I like those old cars, right, that have the, the Cadillac fins. And I think to myself, a car could be more than just a thing that you drive around and go to the, you know, go to the mall, go to the, go to Walmart to get, you know, deer hunting gear or, you know, go get a gun or, you know, on a, like Black Friday. You know, I, 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 I mean, sure, I could take a regular stupid looking car to go to the Black Friday sale where I, sh you know, punch old ladies in the kidney to get in front of them just so I can buy a f 900 inch television for $27. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, I want to take my, whatever the car is the fastest. No, that back in the 50s when they would go to Black Friday sales, they would take a car that had fins on it, six miles of the gallon, <clears throat> no seat belts, living the dream in America. Well, I'm inspired to uh, use that type of ideology when I'm creating the beats of tomorrow. <clears throat> so I think to myself, well, oh yeah, I could do some economical sh**. Hey man, I just got hired for the new Fleetwood Mac record. Yeah, what, what do you mean? I thought Mick Fleetwood is a drummer. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That guy hasn't actually played drums in 30 years. That's what I tell everybody, even though I, uh, I don't, whatever. The point is, is I'm like, okay, I got the gig with, um, who'd I get the gig with, Joe? Come on, man, who'd I get the gig with? New? The Black Crows. They need a new drummer. <laughs> and you show up, and you're like this, yeah, man, the Black Crows, let's play it. And they're like, okay, Dave, wh which Black Crows tune do you know? None of them. I don't know any of your music. I don't know. Call it, though. I got it. Okay, let's do, um... And then the same thing, the song for candle, and like down, it's your hot handle on, give me now. And I'm like this. And they're just looking, I'm not even paying attention to them. Okay, <laughs> what's the next jam? And they're just like, dude, what are you doing? I'm expressing myself, kind of like Cadillac did. <laughs> the fins. And they're like, I'm like, name another one of your jams, dudes. Come on, did you hear how that works? That's just decor. That's a couple of frilly accoutrements. That's um, Rococo flourishes, if you will. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with rolling into an audition where you've been completely, you know, everyone said, oh, you gotta hire this dude, he's this shit. He's gonna come in and nail your, your music, man. Black Crows, he's got it. He comes from this total, like, Gospel Chops meets Nashville meets some other stuff that the Black Crows are into. He's going to kill it. He also plays B3, too, if you need him on, on a B3. No, 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 we just need a drummer. Okay, well, this is your dude. And then you go in knowing that they're expecting you to give him some of that Jim Keltner sh**. And instead, you bust out this meta... All this Chris Dave sh**. And everyone's going like this, whoa! And then all these people that are watching are pulling out their camera phones. But the Black Crows guys are like, what the f 
What are you doing, man? This, none of this makes sense. You go, it doesn't have to. These are Rococo flourishes. These are ways for you to accentuate your music with no real purpose. They're just purposes for people to go, and that's how you get the gig. In the independent rock and roll world, that's rock music that doesn't seem to play by the rules at all of the big record corporations. They're just doing whatever the hell they want to do in the independent rock and music scene. It's like, obviously, super independent of any real machinery. Just out there on the front lines of art. In the independent rock and roll culture, there is a phenomenon that I have noticed and I've been trying to work out my own version of because it seems wildly popular. I always try to find out what's going on, especially with the young, with youth culture, and I try to like attach myself to it, at least be able to understand it, but sometimes I use it in my work. One of the things I've been trying to figure out lately is this insistence of the auxiliary drum that is positioned by a singer. And um, the singer of the band um, is doing their kind of shout chorus, you know. <clears throat> so forget forget all this. Let's pretend none of this is here. Singer of the band is up there. And you know doing like a Smiths ripoff or whatever people are doing, like Total Morrissey ripoff. And you This sort of pentatonic thing, it sounds like a f***ing Ham's beer commercial from 1979, but it does, nobody seems to mind. Everyone's just like, hell yeah, do that sort of thing and then play on your floor tom. <laughs> you flash to the audience, everyone's like... All the, all the kids are like... Or you got some kids that are just like this and then... It's like a keyboard player playing on their thing, which an independent rock and roll keyboard player would be doing a lot of this thing. <laughs> so for the, like this, I'll come the sticks. to art school, but now I play in a rock combo. Anyway, so I've been thinking about ways I can incorporate that type of thing again. I always think about ways I can use these in an improvisational musical uh, text. So here I am, I'm like playing in the, you know, Bad Plus or whoever, all the stupid music I do, and I'm like, but, but not a lot of people, you know, I don't, I don't pack them in like XX does, so I don't, I, I want to find out how to do that. I want to use some of those tools subliminally in some of the weird music that I play, so I'm thinking, what, if I start incorporating some of these things subliminally or not into some avant-garde jazz or whatever, maybe I'll get, I'll siphon off another 300, you know, kids from the XX show. So, I'm over here. doing my thing, right? Just like when I broke off from mil into the military style drumming where I'm trying to get a lot of these drum corps motherfuckers into what I do. Well, how about... Stand up, you know, just push the out of the way. I'm playing all my sh and I just go like this, give the old nod, up comes a 19 year old fresh from the Parsons School of Design, she's got a floor tom and she's like this. <laughs> 